following the series of videos, this is video number three uh, in a four-part series. Part number one and two covered was a demo of an existing closet uh, and then the uh, application of the wainscoting and the build of the bench down below which is uh, out of the view of the camera. So if you're interested in that, make sure you watch videos one and two first. Now, I was kind of excited to build out the shelving up here that would go in the top of our mini mudroom. Uh, but I realized that uh, a lot of the support members and trim pieces of that shelving are going to come up against the uh, the trim of the, the mudroom, which we're going to do in a nice craftsman style. So I decided to uh, spend this weekend working on the, the trim around the, the mini mudroom. Now, as you'll notice, the, the front door is directly against what was the old uh, closet in our new mini mudroom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demo the old uh, clamshell contractor grade uh, trim around this door and replace it with, uh, again, a nice craftsman style look. Uh, and it'll match, and in fact, here in this corner, it'll, it'll tie into the trim around the mudroom. Uh, we'll build out a nice cornice to go along with it. It should be a pretty nice uh, look overall. So welcome to part three. So as you can see, uh, nothing fancy here, just the standard contractor grade clamshell molding. Now this is an area that concerns me a little bit. Previous owner had uh, installed a deadbolt lock here and they had really been quite aggressive in plowing out the molding as well as into the jam to accommodate that deadbolt. So that's going to be a little challenging to, uh, to repair. But I think with a two-part epoxy filler uh, that's pretty sturdy when it uh, sets up will allow us to fill and shape and pretty much make that disappear. Okay, so I cut up the, um, the first board that will run up the right side of the door jam. And I, I cut this to length on the uh, chop saw and then ripped it to, to width, which is five and a quarter. That's just what I chose. As I always do, I'll put down some liquid nails and then uh, nail it to the jam. Uh, and then we'll go and, and fill some of the, uh, the gaps later with, with some uh, spackling. You can see that there's a pretty good gap right here. Some of that will go away with the nailing, but you know, it's to be expected in a 60 year old home. Now, what I did was uh, to make sure that the reveal is the same all the way down along the, uh, the run of the, the jam. I made a block that, um, that has an eighth of an inch cutout in it. What I'll do is I'll put that up along the jam and that, ma that makes it real easy for me to get exactly the same reveal all the way down and all the way around the door. And I'll use this now throughout the house for all of my doors and windows. I'll show you a close up of this in just a moment. So here's the tool I made. It's a scrap piece of uh, five quarter stock. I set the um, table saw up to one eighth of an inch and then ran it um, on both sides to cut out one eighth of an inch of the corner. What that does is it allows me to line up to have the perfect reveal without having to do too much measuring. And this makes sure that it uh, ensures that it's uniform all the way around. So using this, my nailer, some liquid nails, we'll get this thing put together. Ripping the vertical jam trim pieces down to five and a quarter inches. Uh, that's just the measurement I chose, but I'll use that throughout this project for uniformity. Whenever you are getting ready to install trim pieces, you want to make sure you give them a good sanding on the edges and facings, whatever will be exposed in the finished project. As I always do, putting a healthy amount of liquid nails along the entire run of the board. I really think that helps to keep it in place, prevent it from moving over the years especially here at the front door where, you know, it's getting open and closed quite a bit. 
You don't want it to move around on you. And we'll put our first trim piece in place. Use the measuring block we made to ensure we've got the correct reveal and secure it straight into the studs using two and a half inch 16 gauge nails. And it's back out to the shop to rip another piece, sand it, and get it ready to install. I do them separately because each one might be slightly different in length. We're talking only sixteenths of an inch, but it can make the difference. And then securing it again to the studs with two and a half inch nails. Okay, now that the left and right columns are up covering the casing, it's time to start working on the cornice. The first part of the cornice is called the freeze. Now, it's very simply a couple boards put together. We start with a flat stock attached to a five and a half inch wide, three quarter inch thick piece of pine. Here is a quick look at the flat stock. It's just a, a thin piece of uh, pine available in the trim section of your, your home store. Now this freeze, again the first part of the cornice, is going to bridge the gap between the left and right columns. Now remember, always where wood meets wood, use glue and nails. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of liquid nails to the back of the freeze. I always like to use plenty of liquid nails. Now you're going to set that up between those two pieces covering the left and right part of the casing. Plenty of liquid nails there. Of course, gravity is going to help to hold that in place with the help of a couple of two and a half inch 16 gauge nails. Now, the most important part here is you got to make sure those lines are lined up so it gives the appearance that that trim piece cuts in between those two pieces of pine. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll get to building the entablature next. Um, already installed the one up here over the door. Uh, but I built out these columns here that will wrap around this 2x4 stud that's here supporting the, uh, the wall and the ceiling. It's not a structural member, but I didn't want to take it out. And I think it'll add to a little bit of interest to, uh, to having a corner here that separates the front door from the mudroom. So this is, um, this is made up, let's see if I can get it in the camera here, I just made a box. No, uh, no special joinery or anything here. These are just butt joints. Uh, so one piece of wood against another with wood glue and a couple of nails. Let it dry overnight, sand it smooth, and you've got a, a nice box to, uh, to wrap around a, a two by four or whatever you might have. So already applied the uh, liquid nails. I'm just gonna set this in place. Set it in place, just as simple as that. Make sure it's nice and snug. Of course, I don't have a whole lot of play here, but I want to try and get it as close to plumb as possible. So, take the bottom out just a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now, the only other important thing to keep in mind here is to make sure that the top of this aligns exactly with the top of this. I intentionally cut this about a sixteenth of an inch short so that I can raise it up, just hold it in place, there you go. I'm just touching, making sure that this is in line with this. That's key when we wrap our entablature around. Now I'm just going to attach it with a couple of 16 gauge finish nails. Okay. I'll go ahead and continue nailing this up. And next we'll wrap this corner and then we'll, I'll show you how to build the entablature for over the, the mudroom. Okay, so we've got our two columns in place on either side of our mudroom that we're building. And uh, next we'll go over the very simple details of how to build uh, the first steps of the cornice, which is the entablature. I just dry fit up here. So it's just two pieces of wood, just five and a half inch or a one by six 
which is five and a half inches. And then just again, this thin stock. Now, of course, what I've done to fit it into the corner is mitered it at 45 degrees. That just sits up here, right into place. And then the one by six, which of course is five and a half inches across, uh, the same that I used over the, the front door rests upon that. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is, is very simply just wood glue along that bottom edge and then nail it together. I'll let that dry overnight and we'll sand it up and set it into place. Next, we'll, um, we'll start working on building out the cap of our cornice. Um, which I'm going to do some experimenting with. I don't know if I want to use three-quarter um, one-by material or go with the four-quarter, which is a true one-inch. But we'll see what looks best, and we'll, uh, we'll cover that next. Okay, so the top piece of our cornice is attached to the mudroom. Next will be to put the piece across on top of the front door. What we decided to go with was a five quarter board, which is one inch across, one inch thick. And then this I chose a, a five quarter by four, uh, which is actually three and a half inches. Um, that's gonna give us a nice wide top, a uh, nice bold look. And then I have a nice uh, cove molding to wrap around um, once we get this secured. So we'll go ahead and put this up with some glue and liquid nails. Okay, so the glue and liquid nails are up along the top. We have our cornice piece here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the butt joint where the two pieces meet. We'll secure it with some nails. Okay, we're getting pretty close to being done with this one. We've got the cove molding on top of the cornice here. I still have to put it here, and it's a little bit tricky. When you're installing any kind of crown molding, which is what this is basically considered to be, um, you have to cut it upside down and backwards to get the cuts to work out just right. So the way I like to do it is at least just kind of sketch out the, the, the shape of the cut. So when I'm out there, I can look at it on the saw and it kind of makes sense to me. All right, so that's the cut we need to fit into that corner. All right, so we got our piece cut uh, with the appropriate miters and cut the length, and we'll go ahead and tack this one up. Okay, now begins a rather tedious process of getting this piece exactly in place. We've applied a little bit of wood glue along the top and bottom edge and also with the miter. And you just gotta be patient. Work that piece into place. Make sure it's equally spaced along the entire run. You've got a nice sharp miter. And then go ahead and with your pin nailer, nail it in place. All right, so we've got our cornice. Uh, completed. Next step is going to be to trim out the uh, facing here of the header. Uh, I'm going to do that with again just a piece of, uh, of solid wood. I could use plywood in this case, uh, but I do want a little eighth inch reveal to match the doorway, the, the front door. Um, so I'm going to go with the, uh, the solid wood. Now there is one tricky part to this installation. You're going to want the, the board to set on top of 
uh, these two support boards. And again, I'm gonna want that eighth inch reveal. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut an eighth inch rabbit on this board that will let it set down that eighth of an inch. Shouldn't be too terribly difficult on the miter saw. The DeWalt miter saw has a nice stop feature so I can set the depth of cut, make a nice rabbit. And that should fit in there very nicely. The next piece is just gonna simply be the facing piece on the back side. And again, that will be with, um, with solid pine. I'm not gonna worry about putting this one trim detail on here with a thin stock. It's on the inside of the mudroom. It's not gonna be that visible. And I think I'd really rather add that clean look just going up the wall to finish things out. All right, so a couple cuts on the table saw and the miter saw, and we'll be nailing these in place. Okay, as I mentioned, the DeWalt 12 inch sliding compound miter saw is a nice feature in that you can set the depth of cut. So I've set it so that it will allow about one eighth of an inch to be revealed once it sets in place. We'll go ahead and continue to make multiple passes, get it nice and smooth, and then we'll rip it to width on our table saw. Run it on through, no, no worry here with the push stick because it's about five inches thick. All right, so I've got the piece cut it's gonna hide the header here. Again, solid pine. I rabbit it out the side here so that when it sets in, I'll get that 1 8 inch reveal along here. And then it's uh, only particular to me, uh, but this uh, cut here is uh, 4 and 3 8 inches wide. So now I'll work on placing this up here and the rabbits fit just nicely. And you can see we get that nice eighth inch reveal that we're looking for. And now we'll secure it with a few two and a half inch nails. And the next piece will be just a very simple straight back piece uh, that goes all the way across the, uh, the the top of the header. Okay, so here is the back side of the cornice. It's very simply just one piece of wood. It's going to be placed up behind the cornice inside the mini mudroom. And it's just very simply going to rest on that board to be just placed on the top side of the header. Anywhere where wood meets wood, I'm going to use glue elsewhere liquid nails and secure it with some two and a half inch nails. At this point, all of the installation work on our door surrounds is complete. Now comes the, the kind of tedious part of finishing things out, which just like uh, before, I'm gonna use this uh, spackling. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good product, very little shrinkage when it dries, meaning over the, uh, over the days and, and months after you, uh, after you finish this, you're not gonna have holes and, and cracks opening up on you. And this goes on pink and dries white. Now, I usually always let it set up a good 24 hours before I go to sand, just to make sure it's fully dry. So, simple putty knife. We're gonna put it into the nail holes. Now, what I like to do is actually overfill the nail holes. The spackling sands really, really well, real easy. And so I'll actually put a heavy coat of the spackling on. That way I'm sure that when I sand it clean, I'm not gonna have any kind of a divot. And then when it comes time to prime, uh, I, I hopefully will have very little um, spots to go back and, and re-spackle and then re-sand and then re-prime. So and then we'll get to the fun part, which is priming and painting. Okay, folks, well, that completes uh, part three. I hope you'll join me for part four, where we finish out the mini mudroom. I think it looks pretty spectacular, and I hope you'll join me. See you on part four.